Hello, everybody. This is Tim Baker with your You, Me, and BTC episode 205. Another one of our special episodes brought to you by a wonderful people over at America's Card Room. I uh, hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Hope everybody talked with the family about Bitcoin. Maybe, maybe not. I actually, I, I, I talked about it last week because, yeah, you guys are going to get stuck with me solo for two weeks in a row because I don't really know. Um, I have probably have more time than anybody else I know. Uh, I had to bring it up with my family. I had to bring that stuff up and then nobody really seemed to care too much. I'm not really sure if that's because it is more and I, I was the one who had it and everybody was telling me I was dumb for having it and they kind of feel bad or they just don't care. And that does, that does touch a little bit on what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to try to not just repeat myself like I did last week. I need probably a good like six weeks in between my different episodes so I can just do the exact same shtick every single time and it doesn't sound like I'm just repeating it but we'll try it again this week and I'm sure you guys will love it it'll just be a wonderful experience for all of us because as you know I am your favorite here your favorite host and just your favorite person in general I kind of just imagine that all of you have a picture of of me up on your wall like uh Kim Jong-un over in North Korea. I hope you guys keep me up on your wall. Call me not great leader, but um, not comrade either. That's too that's, that's too communisty. Uh, call me the uh, beautiful bro. I'm your, your beautiful bro. Anyway, we'll get back to everything and actually talk about Bitcoin and all that fun shit. But first, I want to again thank our new sponsor, America's Card Room. They now accept Bitcoin. And uh, actually, I mean, they accept Bitcoin and they also accept about, what is it, 60 other different cryptocurrencies. But the cool thing is they don't just accept them and take payment in that. They also let you withdraw your money and whatever you want to. So that's pretty nice if you want to keep it in Dash or Monero or something like that or even Ethereum. You can do that and then you can also just get your money right back out of that after you've bet it. We do have a bonus code for them. BTC 100, you'll, re you'll receive America's Card Room's exclusive welcome package that includes 100% bonus of up to 1000 US dollars on your first deposit. And then they will also give you entries and up to four new depositor free rolls and up to $50 in additional free cash. So that's always cool with free money. You may have already put in your stuff for Bitcoin Gold. You may have... Or what are the B gold or B oh Bitcoin cash? I'm sorry. I've been watching uh, videos now with I think it's Vare freaking out at people for calling it Bitcoin gold, and he's like, it's not, or uh, for people calling it B cash. See, I keep fucking it up too. He'd be pissed off at me. It only takes a couple minutes to sign up, deposit, and start experiencing action-packed tournaments and cash games at America's Card Room. Again, don't, please don't forget to enter the code BTC100. When you sign up, you can get your welcome package, and that also lets them know that you're listening to this podcast, the money they're paying us, and uh, isn't just being thrown away, and it actually is getting them some customers with offer code, again, BTC100. Anyway, now we're going to get into what I think I want to talk about, and let's see if I can actually make any time out of this, and it is that last week I talked about how the rising price, and it's only really risen from there, the rising price is a cool thing about Bitcoin, but we can't forget well, what what the true meaning of Bitcoin. We're coming up on Christmas, and everyone's going to be talking about how you don't, babe, Christmas isn't about getting gifts, it's about giving them. Well, I mean, it's kind of bullshit, because the only reason why we do it is you give gifts because you're going to get them. But. I do believe that Bitcoin does have some ethical reasoning behind it. it, has some ethical, like, why you would use Bitcoin over something else. But I want to talk today about the intellectual benefit, <laughs> it just sounds so douchey, the intellectual benefit of using Bitcoin, but not just Bitcoin, really any technology or thing that gets you out of the day-to-day -day the day-to-day -day kind of grind that people were the day-to-day -day, i don't even mean grind like their work i mean the day-to-day -day thought process and mindset of most people 
I can't really speak for the world, but I do see this, the mindset of most people in the U.S., in the Western world, it does kind of separate you from that. We talk a lot about on here on You, Me, and BTC, we are, most of us, I think, um, we're capitalists, we're, I would call myself probably the closest thing that I have a a label for what I believe in is an easy way of saying it is an anarcho-capitalist, a market anarchist, something like that. So I don't have a problem with uh, with materialism, if that's a way to put that. I don't have a problem with people wanting things. I think that is really what has pushed our species, has pushed developments that we have and has pushed... Uh, progress that we've made as a species is normally from people wanting more things from people wanting to get laid from people wanting to get more money and those things are all kind of tied together so whether or not it is a ethical thing there it might not be good for your quote-unquote soul to only care about money and to only focus on the financial aspects of something i think there's an intellectual benefit to as long as you're doing that materialism outside of the standard set society and that is kind of what i was talking about with how uh, most of my family reacted around thanksgiving most of them didn't really talk to me about now <clears throat> excuse me talk to me too much about bitcoin now that may have been because i was somewhat late for thanksgiving they might have been pissed off at me. I'm not really sure. Fuck them, whatever. But no, I mean, <laughs> if, any, uh, if my family does listen to this at all, I love you guys. And no, I don't get drunk and then sleep in through Thanksgiving. I'm just lazy and I don't like driving places. So I wait till the last possible moment. As I was saying, anything that is going to take you out of the standard day-to-day -day mindset of the western world i think is beneficial if only just because we have this very very profit focused world we have this world and in, in especially in the u.s not as much in the europe western europe where there is this um a good quote a uh, a good uh, work ethic is rewarded is commended and we do reward those people who are who get things done who build things even if sometimes those people don't turn out to be what we want them to be we at the same time have this kind of it there's it, a hatred of those people who do make a lot of money but our society does kind of reward that and points the reward system for people in the way of, okay, I'm going to make money no matter what I do and no matter how that happens. I'm just going to get money together and just hold it, whether it's holding it or spending it. It is a very uh, material driven world because one thing that's, I mean, you can touch it. It's whether that's Bitcoin, dollars, rubles, maybe you necessarily can't touch actual money. But materialism versus something like ethics or something more ethereal does have a very driving force because it's something right in front of you it means I can buy this car I can buy this people will like me because I have more money people aren't necessarily just gonna like you because you have an, a moral code or something like that oftentimes people feel even offended by somebody else having a moral code that's different from them because either it makes them feel inferior because they think that person is trying to push it on them or they just don't agree with it in general and think you're evil for putting that on a pedestal. Now the difference with, this could be anything from Bitcoin to gold to silver to just having money in anything that is not tied to the US dollar, is that materialism in these things is beneficial to you and makes sense, at least to me, intellectually. Because you're building something, you're building worth where it isn't dependent upon an entire uh, it isn't dependent on debt and it isn't dependent on violence and that kind of gets into the more the ethics stuff and we do talk about that a lot how getting out of the u.s dollar is great because 
well, it's evil. It, it's it's backed by oil and, and the military industrial complex, blah, 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 blah. But also, it's good just because if you have, if you've looked into it, if you spend any time looking at how the the economy and, and, and everything in the U.S. right now and in the Western world is, it's all inflationary. If you save your money, it goes down in value. That's partly also why we do have that such a materialistic culture because we don't reward saving. We don't reward people keeping their money for future use because inflation hits. Your, your money doesn't do anything sit in the bank getting the point zero zero one five oh fuck off interest. It's instead of just going down as interest continues to go up and then your house is more expensive, milk's more expensive, everything's more expensive. So materialism in a system like that is not only possibly detrimental to you as a person developing as someone with like legitimate interests and interests beyond just having money, That's it's fine if you want to do that, but it's a dumb place to do it because that system is it's just built on not the right it's not built on the right uh standard to to reward that uh bitcoin now that can fall apart as well like tomorrow i think right now bitcoin price is around 9600 9700 so we're just below 10000 i've read some reports today on reddit that over in korea uh, some of the stuff is already being traded at over ten thousand dollars. Now I'm sure there's some trades in the U.S. going over ten thousand dollars, but some of the exchanges also do have the, over there are selling them for ten thousand because I'm not sure why. I didn't look at it that much. But like I'm saying, Bitcoin can fall apart tomorrow. It can topple, but it is everyone going into it has at least the the semblance that this is a, a, a possibly something that could fall apart. This is a gamble. And then if it goes up to 10,000, that's awesome. If it goes down to 100, and eh, it's still, it's pretty bad, at least as far as someone who's just in with the money. But it is still better than an, an entire system that is based on just pushing off what you have to pay and, ju and going into debt because money right now is worth more than it will be in a year or five years. Anything that is inherently inflationary is going to be bad for that. So why I'm saying intellectually Bitcoin or silver or gold is something more, it's, it's beneficial for your ideas of outside of, or I'm sorry, it, it's beneficial if nothing else, just because it does get you out of the normal, the dollar system. And whether that's, you can say stocks take you out of the dollars too, and you can make money with that too, but you're still tied to, you're still tied to the whole system. And it's, it's kind of propped up by nothing and we, it, not nothing. Cause it's like Bitcoin is technically propped up by nothing. It's just, we all are just buying it and because of ICOs or because of altcoins, it goes up because people's faith in it goes down depending on those things. But it's not something that is built off of, okay, we're just going to take a bunch of money now and we're going to push it off to the our, our children, our grandchildren, and we're going to make them suffer in the future because we don't know how to economically do things because as a people just in general, we're economically illiterate. Get ready for Crypto Overload. We're making it easy to get into the game at America's Card Room with your favorite cryptocurrency. We are thrilled to announce that you can deposit and cash out using more than 60 different cryptocurrencies. We are the first poker site to offer this after already accepting Bitcoin from the beginning. Cryptocurrencies are the future. We can predict that playing real money poker will never be easier at americascardroom.com. Now, I do think this goes beyond just, well, if you go into Bitcoin, you go into silver, you go into whatever, you have money and you, you, you buy guns and hold them. Or uh, we talked a couple weeks ago about how there was 
uh, like a, a poppy, like everyone was buying poppies in, I think it was Holland, and then that the market skyrocketed or whatever, and it turned out it wasn't really true. But even that is, if if, if everyone in the U.S. starts, if for whatever reason, tul- uh, no, it was tulips, not poppies. Poppies get sold because of heroin. Tulips were just some random thing that people liked. It takes you out of the feeling, and it, it, it takes you out of the normal day-to-day kind of, slave mentality i would say the, the what um people on like our co- reddit communism would call wage slavery or uh something like that where your entire kind of existence is based on the dollars in your bank account is based around uh, what what dollars you can have in the future and how the u.s economy is going to perform Uh, If you take yourself out of that, at least partially, I mean, you can have money in dollars and everything, but if you take money out of it, you do kind of hedge your bets, whether, I mean, if it goes down, I'll make a little money on Bitcoin. If it goes up, maybe my dollars will have a better purchasing power. Beyond that, I think it is beneficial just in general in life to break away from societal norms. And I don't mean that in a... Well, uh, who cares about um, uh, d- certain? I, I, I'm not meaning this in a go and just punch your neighbor in the face because society tells you not to. I'm saying the things where society kind of herds you into. I'm going to say herd mentality, even though I already herd you into. But society does. Well, you should do this. And well, why? Well, because everyone else is doing it. Now, you might say that that is why some people get into Bitcoin. I'm not saying that kind of logic doesn't work sometimes, but it's not really logic. It's just, well, I mean, this many people are already doing it, so I might as well. But I think our society has has a problem with, we've, we've gotten to this point in our development, whether it's evolution, whether we were created and then we developed, but we don't just murder everybody now (laughs) like apparently for the past however many years we've been on this planet we've just done violence nowadays and especially individualistic violence is not and i don't think it ever was as much as they make it out to be but individualistic violence is not as it's not rewarded as much as it has been it's not as cost efficient the amount of pain and trouble you can incur by doing something violent acting out of uh and acting like that towards somebody and threatening them is much what the pain and the suffering for you is much less or is much more than the positives that can come out of that but now because of how far we've gotten and we have technology and if you are the one dude with bitcoin you you're not just the one dude with Bitcoin. You can go on Reddit, you can go on Twitter, you can talk with all these different people. So you aren't going to fall apart emotionally where in the past, that's where groups do tend to help. Groups freak out and they they have mob mentality and they kind of just smash stuff for no other reason than because the crowd has gotten hyped up into something and that's just momentum going now you don't really need the crowd behind you you don't need people like living right next to you to necessarily agree with you so i think we need to take advantage of things like that of things like that in life to you know separate yourself from the average population if nothing else than just to stand out a little bit because publicly standing out and i'm not meaning this like go walk around in weird clothing and be whether that's a hipster or you're just like wear like clown makeup all the time and you're a juggalo do that if you want i don't see too much of a help to that i don't see how dressing as a a, as a juggalo or wearing old style clothing is really going to help you break free from like the society's norms man I don't mean like that. I mean things like, well, what does society normally do? Society and most people, they spend most of their time and their, they spend most of their leisure time 
consuming things. And I get to use this as an excuse because I do the podcasting. I also, very shittily, I might add, do write some shit. Uh, whether it's writing for Daniel's, for uh, for Daniel, for the podcast and for the website. Or if it is just doing fiction stuff. I think there is a benefit to creating stuff and to creating worth where there wasn't something before it gives you a sense of accomplishment that i think is good both for your mind and then also just for what whatever somebody would call a soul because if you just kind of go through life consuming things if, if if you if every single thing that you experience and are a part of is just something you're consuming you, you do kind of turn into this this internet culture now where it's just everybody goes on YouTube and just bitches about things. Um, I don't know that I've ever, I very, very, um, in, infrequently, whatever the word is, I don't do it very often where I even downvote a video. I don't think I've ever made a negative comment on a video just because it's not out of any like goodness in me i'm doing it in my head and I'm, I'm saying this is fucking stupid and this person is an idiot and whatever but i don't i'm just lazy but i i think that has helped me a little bit because i'm not i don't feel the need to express my dislike for the creation for someone else creating something if only just for the point that as i said i'm lazy and then but then also and it's like at least they created something we have so much goddamn free time nowadays that if you aren't doing something with it creatively, and even if it sucks, it doesn't matter. It just do it because it does. It it changes you, and, you, and maybe I'm sounding a little bit too sanctimonious, and it's like, well, I'm I'm better than all these people, but I don't think so. I think it does. It helps you. It gets you into the mindset of. Uh, or here's another example you have all these people watch sports watch football every single fucking weekend it's pretty much their god people rush out of church to get home for the one o'clock Steelers game where I live I mean I haven't been to church in a while but that seemed like what it was always before um but then uh, you hear oh he should have caught that and I might have just uh fucked this recording up a little bit with that but oh he should have cut caught that or oh why can't you make that tackle or uh why, why did you miss that kick and it's like dude you fucking do something you want to play professional football you want to play professional hockey why the fuck are you complaining about this if you've you've done nothing like even i'm not even saying like doing something then or or, or have done something you have plenty of guys who, oh i played high school football and Blah, blah, blah. But do you do anything now besides just go to your job and sit there? No. I mean, maybe you do, but most people don't. Most people are content to consume and take things. And I guess that would be, I was taught saying, I was saying materialistic culture before. I would say materialistic versus consumeristic. And consumeristic, I think, does have a more, much more negative impact on its people than just a a purely materialistic society does because a consumeristic culture tells you that or teaches you whether it, it's not it's not out in your face it's not that easy to notice but it does teach you that well the best thing you can do and you are the best thing you can do is consume that's what you do that's what defines you that's what makes you cool that's what make, gets you laid you get laid because you wear these certain kind of clothes or because you buy these headphones or because you go to the bar and you spend so much money on alcohol because that's somehow going to a club where you can't hear anybody talk and where you can't actually do anything productive besides grind up on some random person is somehow beneficial to your social life I can't really get behind that idea because just consuming something and not actually putting something back out into the I don't know if you want to call it the universe but the world is probably not good for you as I was saying before whatever it means to have a soul like emotionally you, you start to well, I mean, I, I've never accomplished anything. You start to have like depression over that, but then also it's just not good 
intellectually. Sometimes you can't just consume things, consume things without that affecting you. You do need to kind of let it out. And whether it's shitty or not, and I think I've bitched on this podcast before about how everything's so shitty now because we just have Reddit and everybody draws and it's awful and everybody does fan fiction. It's awful. I'll take those back a little bit. I'd say at least those people are trying. I'd rather you not do fan fiction. Maybe try to create your own universe and everything. But do something. Change something. Uh, create something. Do something that is going to not just now, but do something where you can go in five years, whether or not anybody likes it, I still did put some kind of art out there because at this point in society, we're separated enough from our actual physical neighbors and the people around us that you don't have to worry about how those people view you as much. You don't have to worry that your neighbor's like, well, this, this kid over here does poetry on his spare time and I, I hear him through the window doing beatnik poetry from the 60s. So it, it's not really going to negatively affect you. You don't need your neighbors to be there for you whenever you, I, I don't know. I mean, you might need them whenever a hurricane strikes or something like that, but I also don't live near a hurricane. That's the other thing. Advice, I'll end this podcast here pretty much with the advice of do something with yourself, be creative, put content out there. And just try to express yourself because I do think it is good for your mind, body, soul, everything. But also, don't live in a place of natural disasters. It's not a good idea. Live either where I live in like the, a little bit in from the East Coast. So there's not really any hurricane, there's not any tornadoes, but then also hurricanes don't reach us. Or someplace like Daniel lives, which is in the middle of the desert. And the only way you're going to die is if you fall asleep outside. But, uh,. And before I quit the episode, I want to, speaking of consumer or uh, speaking of materialistic, okay, yeah, I somehow stopped the recording, but I'll, I'll continue here. Check out America's Card Room and use our code BTC100, get plenty of free shit, and then you can play poker, which counts as creative. All right, guys, have a good week, and thanks again for listening. Bye.